Good morning, everyone. My name is Josh Locklear. This is Mr. Brett Kenlaw. We're here today to talk to you about how Lumbee River maximizes the integration between OMS and DIS. So, a little bit about us is our service territory is in the southeast of North Carolina. We are, it spans from the south of Fort Bragg down to North Carolina, South Carolina uh, border. Mm -hmm.
but we want to do our part to be a good person. And lastly, and by far the least fun, that was the, uh, the better tracking our data for our company. So the first outcome in fact from these was our public facing map. So most utilities have a outage map that the public can see where the, the outage is. Our map, pretty basic. All we had was the location of the outage and how many people were affected by the outage. So the first thing we're doing was we started working on the ETOR. With that, the way our system works is you have two options. You can set a, a certain time for it to throw out or you can get it to use historic data. So what we've done, we started looking at historic data of downline devices or the fuses and to see if it, that, what the averages looked like. So as we implemented it, we started tweaking it. And right now, if we have outages under 25 outages, it predicts the outage within a 90% accuracy. Okay. We also wanted to have a way to show that to our, to our membership that we were working on the outages. So we added the functionality of having an icon on the outage map. So when the crews get up to the outage, now we assign it to the crews and, the crew, and it'll show on the outage map that, hey, someone's on this outage. And next was the outage call. So when the crews get there, they go out, they assess the outage and see what's going on, they tell operations. When operations get this information, we enter it into the system and the membership can see what's going on live as we're going to that, fixing the outage. So the second thing we need is to put a reliable test outcome. It's something that I've covered with, it's not the same, we have to think about it for seven years, but it's definitely a reliable, dynamic test outcome. So we need to put that in the outcome. Because of the nature of our, our system, we have to have a network connectivity, so we have several iterations of a, of a desktop application. So in most cases, we're not providing added or software to some So we do, we do like a lot of IT professionals um, necessarily. Um, we know we're um, But uh, we've, had, we've had some trouble with just uh, relying on software in the past. So luckily, our third party vendor uh, uh, has recently kind of developed a desktop application. And so we thought we need to try to scale that up. So just by doing that, uh, you know, we put a space to where some of our employees can be in the activity functionality. So they, they essentially what we've added to this desktop application are the same analysis to the that we do the standard uh, CIS map. And so, for example, uh, like our accounting department, uh, they rely on, on fire to tax. So, you know, looking at the ability to start working with our fire districts, they can do that without having to rely on the operations department to guide them. And so, once we stood it up and we were uh, comfortable with it, we had an hour minimum of finality to it. They concluded that the final five. Lastly is our linemen, our field representative, have, have iPads. So we gave them for a few years now, they had the ability to look at our GIS, our GIS information out in the field. Well, we added the we uh, added the capability to see live outages. So this helps with two things. One, it helps with our our crew management 
And it also gives them the power to know what's going on out in the field so they can see, like, hey, we're going to finish this out of joke. We can go to this next one right here, doing major events. Uh, the last two activities here, uh, have not been the So during this upgrading, during all this, we had opportunities to add, to add some stuff to it as we're doing upgrades. So the first thing we've done was we integrated our OMS and GIS with our, our SCADA system. Does anyone here know what SCADA is? That's what I'm talking about. All right. So we, we implemented it as then when we lose a downline breaker or we lose a substation or transmission, it communicates and let, uh, let us know, like, hey, there's something going on here. you got to outage it, right? That was the first thing we've done. Current, and now currently I'm working on getting the fault information back to our SCADA system. So what that means is sometimes you have outage underground fault. Well, it, it produces a high current, and it, the SCADA system can push that back to the OMS, and it helps us predict where the outage is going to be when we get out there. So the guys just ain't digging all through the yard. Next is the data share agreements. So what we're doing, we reached out to our local governments, try to build a connection with like 911, the mercy. And with this was we found a way to be able to hold each other accountable with sharing information. So what we do is we share our poll information with 911 in our local counties. And they share their, their, e, their new addresses or new roads and stuff a whole lot quicker than they used to. It used to take 90 days to get information now. We get it within 15 by using these agreements. Next is the member, uh, member notification. So with the OMS, uh, we, we integrated it with a way to communicate with our membership. So what the membership is now, they can text us and let us know they have outage. So they can say, hey, we're out of power. When they text us, we can let them know two things. We can let them know, hey, we know you're out, we're on the way, or two, hey, we're going to create an outage and get out there and get, get, this, get this handled. And as the outage continues, we can communicate and give them updates via the text messages. And when the power comes back on, we shoot them text like, hey, Power's back on and go home. Another way we use this is when we have planned outages. So we're upgrading lines. Sometimes you have to drop people. We'll let them know like a week ahead, hey, we'll come to you, your area next week. We'll, you're going to possibly, possibly lose power in between this time. The day of, we'll send a reminder, hey, you're going to possibly lose power today. Try to just communicate. Next is the management notifications. So with these, it sends out emails that you know we lost a substation, letting us know we lost a like, downline breaker, transmission or key accounts, like if we lose a key account, we know, hey, they ain't got power. And we also set up thresholds for the outage system and for, for them to send out notification. So if we have 75 outages, it'll send an email out to all, to all management, letting them know, like, hey, something serious is going out in the field. So we got that. And lastly is AVL. Earlier, we talked about our public-facing map. Well, internally, we have it integrated with AVL so we can see the location of the guides. This just helps us plan where, uh, when we're looking at outages, a major event, it helps us get a better idea where the guys are at and where they need to go next. Uh, so, I'll be honest, we got in the basics in one of these meetings in our presentation, but we thought it might be beneficial to be provided to the community of the presentation. It was beneficial to us, quite honestly, when we sat down to the community, so we could sit there and some type of some version of what we've done here, some of the so we're going to start with our strengths. So the first is awareness. This whole presentation, we've been talking about how to better inform our membership, our directors, and our employees. So that was our, that was our strengths because we accomplished that. People know what's going on when there's outages, right? Next is standardization. Over this, when me and Brett got, in our, get put, got put in our positions, 
we actually, the people that were in the positions before, left. So we didn't have no institutional knowledge when we got in roles. So what we done was we started making SOPs, we got a manual, we started checking everything we're doing. So if we move out, like I've recently moved out, so when we move out of the positions, whoever takes our place has something to go on where they don't have to do that anymore. Our weaknesses, though, is our continuing education because what we were doing for us, we were not doing for everybody else to co op. So we would do upgrades, and when I say upgrades, like we'd implement the stuff, we did a really good job at showing them how to use it, but we didn't follow up saying, hey, we got to upgrade in here, or hey, you know, let's, are you using this correctly? Because, you know, I, I don't see, see what's going on. But so we, we work, we're going to work on that. Our next application testing. We rely heavily on our third party ven uh, vendors to keep up with uh, the integration in between the softwares. So we are, we're going to start actually figuring out a way to test it ourselves so we know everything's working, integration's working correctly. We have a number of opportunities that we could have listed here, but with, with these integrations in particular, one of the things that's put out we do have to find out the network on our, on our system. And we have that uh, in our GIS and you know, in the United States. The one thing that we would like to do is that it kind of gets, because whenever our private network was starting to be the decision was made to start it, it kind of just, uh, we wanted to do five opportunities. I think you got your alternative story before, but we just decided we wanted to find them. We found that way there was another one where we, you know, over it. Didn't post it somewhere new or over it, I guess. I don't know. So, we got it. Um, so, one thing that we're trying to do is get our private network kind of in mind by way. So, we do have a very specific process of how we do it, you know, how we do it, and how we help them and our community. We are in a different way. So, and a couple of the ways that we want to do that. Incorporate more reliable out of out of state or in location. And the better in the one that's safe than the new. So if we do have part of that body network is fine to your home. And you know, there are there is a notification system in place, but it's just not as good as it should be. We also have fiber through our service station and through downline devices. So there's a ton of you know uh interconnectivity here that we need to incorporate into how we use Integrate our uh, over the next GIS. Uh, next, uh, web maps. We do have some versions of this. Uh, I don't know if there are like, any county, <coughs> municipalities, or people in here. Um, we'd like to get our, our online uh, public session for the next time. We have to get out of the map. We'd like to provide things like our pre and uh, planned out. We do have the, uh, the online footprint from a, an internal perspective. A lot of our students use web maps and applications that are in a specific project. So we want to expand. Our threat, uh, network capability is huge for us. Uh, we are a really well uh, network cooperative, so they must not be as body, particularly uh, with the VPNs. Uh, and but, but my phone is here, so that's fair. Uh, we're working with the other phone booth, we just got things on the phone, but the funny thing is we were kind of mocked up and days before we left. So we, our heat department, actually our network engineer gave us some, some really good information. So I, I'm going to kind of tie this into Josh's weaknesses and say, you know, if we had uh, you know, more conversations with our team more frequently, we would have known that. Uh, and lastly, cybersecurity is probably the huge threat, particularly now in the city, all aware of things going on with some of the things that make it, and especially with us hearing uh, information that's concerned with the outside of the organization as well. We want to stay in contact with our team again, especially with our third party team. Like Josh mentioned, I'm kind of over to all services, so we can make a concerted effort. Thank you. Any questions? So we use Hitachi ABB's uh, outage map system, the Sienna Tech, and we use Fatour for our 
Madden. So on this one, uh, it took time. What we're doing, we target our oldest linemen first. By the foreman, we gave their 50, 60 almost. So we gave them iPads first. And we let them push it for the guys. And it actually worked in a benefit because all of them use it now. It took us to targeting our older guys and make sure they knew what was going on first. They yeah. yeah. We haven't really had like I would keep other than the money that we really expect to do. I don't want to go reading why. One one first pass is why. I don't know. And we're just real good at using that. Well they just wanted an iPads to watch Netflix some moment. You pray games on the iPad. Well, I'll tell you that you don't carry it in the game. I'll keep that off. Yes, sir. That it. All right. Thank you. Okay.